When the war began, Alexei Podiumkin, a principal dancer with Ukraine's National Ballet, turned in his tights for military fatigues. Here he is in downtown Lviv last week, having just returned from duty as a medic. What was your life like before the war? Before war, I must, uh, I preparing a new premiere in ballet, Ukrainian ballet. You know, like real normal life. And just one moment, it's like changes. But uh, I need to do something. I can't sit just at home in shelter and watch TV, how my friends uh, die and uh, everyone do something. What have you seen these last few months? Every day, it's really scary. They crashed everything, destroyed the houses of civilians people. It's brothers, uh, son, uh, fathers, sisters. While he says he's shaken by what he's seen unfold on the battlefield, he's also appalled by a war taking place on another front, at the Bolshoi. Like Bolshoi now, it's toxic feature. Nobody wants to work with you. You said toxic. Toxic, yes. In Russia, art, it's politics. It's uh, Russian government use, use it uh, uh, barely, it's like weapon. The weapon was deployed at the Bolshoi as recently as last month, when the theater revived a production of Spartacus in support of the Russian military invasion, unnerving many in the dance world, including longtime head of the Dutch National Ballet, Ted Branson. Well, it was a very uh, uh, clear statement that we have to support our boys who are on a military operation to save Ukraine from the fascists which is a totally ridiculous concept, of course. This allegory, Spartacus, about the, the slave revolt is, is somehow being co-opted by yeah. the, the aggressive yeah, superpower. Absolutely. No, it's not, it's, not, it's not for nothing that this became one of the signature ballets of the Soviet, of the Soviet time.